Good evening. Thank you so much for joining me this evening for the first advisory committee meeting of Zone 1C. I'm happy to see you. There are lots of things you could be doing this evening. Welcome. This evening, we're going to hear from two leaders of the district. I am Jennifer Seymour Wright and PDG Veronica Ralph Manuel. We'll also get reports from each club that's present, letting us know the service projects that they've been doing for this Lionistic year. Each club will get an opportunity to share information on their upcoming events, and we'll exchange ideas about our service projects. The advisory committee meeting for Region 1 Zone 1C of District 20K1 is now called to order. Lion Sandra, can you please start us off with the invocation? Sure, Lion Paulette. Lions, we give thanks and praise to our Father. We thank him for waking up this morning. We thank him for being with us during this day. And we pray that he will be with us tonight as we go to bed. As it's All Souls Day, I would also like to say, let's pray for our faithful departed. May they rest in peace. On that note, we will say, where lions meet, be present, Lord, to wield our hearts in one accord, to do thy will, Lord, make us strong, to aid the weak and right the wrong. So, Father, please help us continue to try to serve humankind as you ask to do the job of serving humanity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lion Lenworth, can you please lead us with the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the and republic, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation under, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, I will now call on the Laurelton Club to give their report. That would be you, Lion Lenworth. Right, I must thank you, um, Zone Chair. I must apologize for our president, Chris Casimir, who is not on. We do have our board meeting in a few minutes, and um, he's getting ready for that meeting. I am going to break down what we have achieved so far since the year started. We currently have 32 members. <clears throat> we have inducted four new members since the year started. However, we have dropped four and um, we have one resignation. She's currently out of the country and uh, she's in the island and this. She said that she is better off if she resigned. So we that gives a total of 32, current 32 members. We, um, we have a scholarship, but in fact, we have two scholarships that we grant every year to two high school students going into college. It's $1,000 each. And we have awarded the first installment of $500 to each student so far. It's within each semester, the first semester, once you enroll and send us back your transcript, you get your $500. The second semester, the same thing, you have to enroll and send us your transcript and the, and the committee look at it and you get your next $500. So we have disbursed the first $500 each. We were able to um, answer the district call for $250 donated to the cancer committee to um, help them achieve the, um, the goals that they were looking for, recognition. So we donated that $250. Uh, also for the, um, the district clothing drive, there were two Saturdays that clothes were collected 
at the VFW post 5298. We donated um, the first week one large bag of men's and women's clothing. And last Saturday, we donated um, 13 winter coats for children. Um, our upcoming event, which is our signature project, one of our the project is our Thanksgiving luncheon with the um, residents of the Little Flower group homes. There are some special needs men and women. It's scheduled for November 9th, 19th, and we will have a lunch with them over the years. I think last year we fed a um, total of 70 people, including uh, the staff and the, and the residents. That's on November 19th, it's a Saturday, and we are looking forward to that. We are planning for that event at the moment. That's it for, that's it for me. I'm not sure if Lan Annette can add anything else. Lan Annette, did I miss something you want to add? You have to unmute yourself. You're right? muted. Sorry. We are in the process of planning for our charter celebration, which will be held in, on May 6th of 2023. That's the only thing that we have added. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Back to you, Amazon Chair. Thank you very much for that report. Now we move on to Springfield Gardens Club to give their report. Lysandra, you muted. Sorry about that. Uh, since our last report ended on June 12th, I started my report on June 16th. Where in observance for Father's Day, we donated a 55-inch television to the Recreation Creative Arts Department of the VA Hospital at the St. Aubyn's campus. Uh, on July 31st, we had our budget planning meeting. And August 20th, of course, we attended the Family Fund Day and we made a monetary donation to that event. We held our calendar meeting on August 21st. On September 10th, a member participated in the Teal Walk on the 13th, we had our first meeting of the year at which our zone chair Paulette attended and she installed our officers. Uh, Region Chair Sylvester also visited at that time. September 16th, we made the $250 donation that the District 20K1 Cancer Committee requested to assist in their providing a one-time donation of $5,000 to the American Cancer Society. Uh, September 20th, in observance of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, we made a donation of children's reading and activity books to Ronald McDonald House Charities in New Hyde Park. September 28th, um, First Vice President Merle Warren, Secretary Lion Iris, and Treasurer Gloria Garraway attended the District First General Meetings at Russo's. Uh, October 8th, a member participated in the, in the work for domestic violence. October 15th, myself, Iris, and Merle attended GATH training to strengthen our leadership skills. And a bag containing clothing and personal items were also donated at that event. Um, on September 16th, members participated in the Making Strides Walk for Breast Cancer. On October 20th, there was an article showcasing Springfield Gardens Lions Club service to the community that was featured in that week's edition of Caribbean Life's newspaper. October 26th, we collected 82 coats, 35 hats, 27 scarves, and 20 gloves, which was the result of our coat drive that was delivered to Helen Keller Services for the Blind to be distributed to program participants and communities of Brooklyn Hempstead and Islandia. Um, 
There's a member that sponsors a child in Africa for a monthly donation of $47. So from July to now, it totals $235. And members are also involved in volunteer activities outside of the Lions Club in their churches or the Girl Scouts. Uh, in November, we're planning our Thanksgiving basket giveaway in which we include a full meal, uh, including dessert, to four families. And in December, we will do our toy drive, our toy giveaway to children of Dove House, which is a shelter for abused women. And that's my report. Thank you very much, Ryan Sandra. And um, now we ask St. Albans. Ryan Donnery, you're up next. Good evening, everyone, again. Um, the St. Albans Lions Club started their year contributing to the picnic. Um, we also, and we had members um, attending the picnic also. Then on in, sep in September, September 3rd, we had our first um, service event, which is a back to school with the uh, um, in conjunction with Oneness Pentecostal Church, where we provided over 300 bags, backpacks with books and other school stuff for the for our over 300 kids. We also did a membership drive during that event, where we were able to um, solicit a, um, approximately 10. Um, prospective new members. We also gave $574 total to the cancer to the cancer district 20k1 to um, cancer call um, to meet that goal. Um, coming up, coming up, we have our Toys for Tart drive that we do, which is also a signature event that we do. We also have a fundraiser coming up on November 12th, which is a breakfast at Dennis. And we inducted one new member for this line is to here. And our goal is to to about 10. As we said, we inducted one and we have nine to go. Hopefully we'll be over that amount. Um, St. Albans Lions Club also do the pantry every week at um, 148 um, where we have two, sometimes more members volunteering to pack um, the, the bags for the um, attendees and also distributing it the following day. So normally it's a two day affair. We, we have a garden that, sent, that we um, have members visit weekly. To, um, it's, on, it's in St. Albans, I believe also. I shouldn't say I believe. It's also in St. Albans. And they visit there and have a bed that we um, members have sponsored. Um, upcoming also is our 35th. Please tell me if I'm not right, Lion Bernica. Our 35th anniversary celebration coming up on next year, where we intend to celebrate. And uh, oh no. For now, that is it. Unless I left out something, please feel free, Ryan Vernico, to help me out if I left anything out. You're muted. Ryan Vernico, you're muted. The whole thing went out. <laughs> Thanksgiving <laughs> basket. Oh, yes. We expect to give out at least 10 to 12 Thanksgiving baskets, and we're working on that. 
right now. Yes. yes. And I think you covered most of it. Yes. yes. Um, okay, thank uh, you. Also, members attended the last general meeting and um, yes. for the district. We had five members attending the last cabinet meeting. Yes, we did. Sure did. Okay. 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 Thank that. you, Lion Dollary and Lion Veronica. Um, we've been busy. <laughs> we've been really busy in this um zone. Okay, I will now ask Lion PDG Pauline. PDG Pauline. P Good evening, everyone. So sorry that I um my my Zoom is not working well. I can't see my picture. <laughs> so I don't know what you know when your phone is full and everything else is hooked on to one thing. <laughs> and that's what is happening to me all day today. So I have the pleasure of introducing um, Lion Jennifer Seymour Wright. She's the Global Service Team Coordinator, and she's from the prestigious Crown Heights Lions Club. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lion Jennifer Seymour Wright has been a Lion and a member of the Brooklyn Crown Heights Lions Club for the past six years and is currently serving as their membership chairperson. She is the current Global Service Team Coordinator in District 20K1. As Global Service Team Chair, her mission is to motivate Lions in the district to become proficient in reporting their clubs, activities, and service project in a timely manner into my lion. Lion Jennifer is a recent graduate of Lions University. She graduated with her bachelor's degree at the USA Canada Lions Leadership Forum this past September. Lion Jennifer has been the recipient of numerous awards and recognition at the club and district levels. Some of her awards are the Melvin Jones Fellow, Robert J. Uplimger, Knights of the Blind, Lion of the Year, and the past International President Douglas X. Alexander Certificate of Appreciation for her undeniable service to the community, just to name a few. Lion Jennifer was also a past president for her club. While at the district level, Lion Jennifer was able to hold several titles. She was a region chairperson, a zone chair, a past teal, tell every amazing lady about ovarian cancer committee chairperson, all this while playing an active role on various other committees. She is looking forward to continuing to serve her community and explore all avenues where exceptional projects can be created. Lion Jennifer's passion and joy of being a lion will always cultivate as she continues to serve her community in any capacity she feeds she sees fit. And now I have the pleasure of presenting Lion Jennifer Seymour Wright. Good evening, Lions. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, PG Pauline, for that warm welcome, for that warm uh, admiration. Thank you. Thank you all again. And it's a privilege and a pleasure for me to be with you today at, your, at the AC meeting. Zone Chair Paulette, thank you for having me today. At, uh, so I, I could address your the, the rest of the, um, the clubs. First of all, let's begin with <coughs> service. Our job, our goal right now is to serve. And I know District 20K1, we do not have a problem with service. We are serving every day. But the, um, the main focus right now is for us to report our services so that we can celebrate at the end of the year what we have done. Because I've been listening to 
the clubs. And I know we have been, we're doing awesome. We're doing great with the service projects. Keep up the good work. Uh, I am proud of you. And I know when I report to the governor, she's also, you know, we should also be proud because what we're doing is that we're leading the forces and let's continue doing what we're doing. It's, uh, right now, we would like to see if we can maybe continue moving forward in a way whereby we could be thinking outside of the box. Let's try to develop or, or let's try to embrace pro, uh, projects that we're not comfortable with. I mean, we, we know we're usually doing the regular feeding or the distribution. Let's try to get something. Let's try to see if we could stretch a little further and do something that we're not used, used to doing. And in the process, it don't have to cost us a lot of money because the goal is for not to go into your pockets and be broke when you're done, but to do service that is going to be like minimum cost and it will have a whole lot of um, admiration to it. There's a lot of projects. I'm not sure I could share. Um, there's a project where you could, you know, the hangers that you receive from the dry cleaners when you take your clothes over. If you return those hangers back to the cleaners, right? That's a project right there because that's, that's environmental recycling. They'll take it back, right? So, you know, I mean, so things like that. And that's, that's, that'd be a huge project for you because it, it gives you the points, but it costs you zero, not nothing to your pockets. Right, so let's try to see what where else we could be imaginative. Or oh, um, like now, well, summer is almost over, awesome. over. But it's those of you who had your kitchen garden or your flower gardens at home during the summertime, if you had, if you were keep um catching water in the blue rain barrel, the, the drums, the water that you catch in there to water your plants. Remember, that's not costing money again. It's not going on your water bill. That's an environmental project right there. Watering the plants from the rainwater in the barrel that you caught, that's it. So let's try to see the main, and that's something that you wouldn't normally sit and think about because it's, that's more like outside the box. So let's, I mean, let's try to focus to see where we, how far we can get and what we'll do in order to enhance our service. Because my, uh, my theme this year is for us to celebrate. Let us celebrate what we're doing and give ourselves um, the incentive to continue doing it. I know most of the clubs on this Zoom right now, most of you guys are doing well and you're reporting your projects. Let's continue to do that. And for the, those of you who have not really been um, reporting, myself and team, we're available anytime you're ready for us to have a session with you. The president, the secretary, the service chair, we would love to sit in with you or even stop by if you have, if you have an in-person meeting we will stop by where we can do hands, hands on training. There was a training this past Saturday for presidents and secretaries, those who were able to come out. But we'll continue doing it because the goal is to have the club proficient in reporting by the end of the linguistic year, which is June 2023. I'd like to share some stuff with you uh, right now. How do um, clubs benefit individually from reporting? Reporting service helps transfer knowledge and the best practice to your club's future leaders. Club officers can review past service uh, activity reports, learn from the successes of the club's previous activities and better plan for future activities. You see, there's a record when you report for service. Reporting service is a matter of local pride. Reporting puts your club on the map as leaders in your community. And it's an important way to share success with other clubs in your district and around the world. A high percentage of clubs reporting service is a sign of a healthy district. Reporting service allows you to become eligible for service awards. Right, and um, like I said, the governor this year, she's, she's trying, she's gonna be having a, a set of awards that we're gonna be giving out to the clubs who have been reporting and uh, the GST team, which is my team, we're, we're going to be happy. We're having incentives, too, um, for the clubs who report the most within the, the line this year and who are much not only reporting the most, but who are much like prompt and on time. I think I had mentioned at the past district meeting where we were trying to have the clubs report the service of the previous month by the 15th of the following month. So as to make sure we don't really forget anything. Okay, the month ended, in, ended on October 31st. By November 15th, all your activities from October should have been reported already into my line. I mean, that's to help you, I mean, to help at least, you know, well, you, you have that, that, mark of, that marker point there to say, well, okay, 
It's, it's November 15th, where are we right now? Is all my projects reported? Have everyone um, given in? So I know usually it's, it's easy for, it's, it's usual for the president, the secretary, or the service chair to do the reporting. So the lions who are unable to report fully, you can sub submit your re projects to, the pres to your president or your secretary and have them input it for you in a timely manner. Because like I said, we'll be, give, we'll be giving out points and everyone wants to be a winner, right? Because we know it's, when, you, when you perform your projects, like I said, it gives satisfaction to, uh, to us, right? It empowers you, the, the person who is doing the project, and the person who you're serving to, they're happy and they're empowered too. So let's continue to celebrate ourselves. Let's continue to keep up the good works and let's continue to report our projects in a timely manner. Thank you very much. It was a very, it was my pleasure being here with you today. Is there any questions? I'm open for questions. I never knew that by returning my hangers to the dry cleaners, I was participating in the environmental service project. Yep, you see, yep, that is okay. it. I know, I now have to report that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that has been a project. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, is, that's it. Line Sandra, is, yes. Uh huh. Is composting a project for environmental? Yes, it is. Oh, it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, composting, yeah, they just yeah, report it. Yeah, it's a project because it's an environmental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Lion Merle, you had your hands up? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you do like a service project, say you are the chair for a special committee, can you give credit also for your club? Um, you are a part of the club, yeah. Because remember, you, you're doing it on, on the district and you're a part of that club. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? Remember, okay, whatever club you're from, you're on behalf of your club. Thank you. You're very welcome. Would you consider um, recycling a service project? Sure is. It sure is, yeah. Okay. Recycling like the, 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 the water bottles yeah. right, that you put in the thing, right? At my house, um, there's a guy who walks by and he, um, anybody don't come in the yard. He comes in the yard because we know him for a while. And mm -hmm. I put all the bottles aside in the yard. And he comes and he picks up something, a bag or two, depending how often, how often he gets there. Mm -hmm. And you report that. That's okay. the bag of the bag of bottles or whatever yes. you have there. That's the project. Yeah. I Thank donated, uh, donated 25 water bottles recycling. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, I am collecting all the water bottles. I have two large garbage bags, but usually I wait until I see somebody coming down my street. So I'm not reporting that until I find the person coming down the street. But in the meantime, I'm collecting. I never, I haven't counted them though. I just go large garbage bags. Well, okay. So, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that works. Okay. All right. So I'm doing that kind of stuff there's things that really is done but we don't report it probably we figure it's not it's not that important it right yeah it doesn't feel like oh a project okay sometimes i feel like uh i guess i was reading one of those daily words things and they're saying that and and the bible too and he says that when you do something good you're supposed to do it in secret and not say that you're doing it. And I go, every little thing, I feel bad if I report every little thing because I feel like I shouldn't be reporting every little thing that I do. Is that... <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I understand what you're saying and I know what you're saying. But like I said here, you, you don't have to go into in-depth details, you know. Okay. Okay. You have a neighbor that you help out with whatever you do with her or him or her. You don't have yeah. to put, I went on X, Y, Z. Help neighbor down the block, groceries or whatever. I'm saying you try to make it, it don't have to be that personal. Okay. Right? Yeah. 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 You know I mean, but yeah, but the fact is that the fact is you're doing something with your time. So, I mean, that's how you just um, reporting how you, how you're spending your time in any given day. Okay. Get it? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, you everything everything is a project. 
I'm going to come back. I'm going to, I'm going to attack. Well, not attack. I'm going to reach out to my lion and my group lion, Merle, who <laughs> is a member of the Men mental health committee. And she started, a, a, what was it? Merle feel good, not feel good. Um, that project you said to do something, say it again. Healthcare. No, the one that you said, do something good and it will make you feel oh. good. Yeah. So uh, I forgot what you call. So the thing. Diane Harris, can you bring it up for us? I'm sorry. Say it again, Lion Merle. You know that thing that we have put out of for the Mental Health Week. I think Mary Ellen. Oh, the um, random acts. You want me to show that flyer? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. One so moment. Random acts can random acts of kindness that was done with the mental health. Uh, committee in mind, should that be reported as service? That was a club project. You did it for um, service for the club? Uh, uh, Lion Ralph was on, like I said, the mental health committee. And okay. on one, they suggested a ran do random acts of kindness to your mental health so you should feel good. So there were uh, quite a few random acts of kindness Kind of. that I okay. performed. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, random acts of kindness yes. be listed as yes, as, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. And remember, right when you are putting it right, how what how whatever hours it took you to do those random acts of kindness, you report the hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, it may not be hours. Might be a few minutes. Well, that's all right. Everything, everything past five is an hour because remember, <laughs> you don't have to report every single minute. But hey. You started at 5, you finished at 5.30. It's an hour between from 5 to 6. Okay. Right? right? Yeah. You just okay. round it up. Thank you. Very, very good. I saw that. Very good. Random acts of kindness. Very good. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, right, you guys will be surprised. Little things that we can do that wouldn't cost us any money. And we're doing it daily. We're not really, you know what I mean? We, we, we don't even recognize that, that that's what we're doing. Because because it might seem so insignificant to us, but yeah, I mean, my um, LCI would like to know what we're doing. So that's showing them, I mean, showing that showing that okay, we are doing random random um, kindness, random acts of kindness. We don't I mean we we're, we're recycling. We're so everything you do, it like I said, it just elevates your club and the district. Okay. Thank you, Lion Jennifer. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Lion Jennifer. And um, uh, Lion PDG Pauline. PDG Pauline, you're muted. Got it. Okay. Okay. It is my pleasure to introduce to you past district governor, <coughs> Veronica Ralph Monroe. She's a charter member of St. Albans Lions Club. This year, she's serving our district as a global extension team coordinator. And last year, she served as a district conflict resolution chair and also she served as the year before as district protocol chair. And she served as district governor in 2005-2006. She also served Lions Club International as an associate at district governor school in Thailand. She's a presenter at the USA Canada Leadership Forum. She presented at Lions Advanced Leadership Institute. And she's also a Faculty Development Grad Institute graduate. She um, served as a director of the Multiple District 20 C program, director of the MD20 Camp Badger and she's also a director for the Brandel Murphy Youth Foundation. She, um, she served as state extension chair 
and she presenter at the MD20 convention, sub-district leadership and membership training. And she was also a presenter of the vice district governor training. She served as district global membership team coordinator, presenter at the district annual leadership conference. She's presented at the worldwide membership day presenter district officers training, district midwinter chairperson several times. She was also um, the district humanitarian chair. She also served as the president of the district Govern past district governor association. And she's a guiding line for several clubs. And she has received many awards and proclamation, including the progressive Melvin Jones fellow. I have much pleasure in presenting to you past district governor, Veronica Ralph Monroe. Good, good evening, Lions. Good evening. It's a pleasure to share with you this evening some ideas that can improve our membership growth, retention, <coughs> and also with ideas for forming new clubs in the district. This year, as was mentioned, my I was asked or to be the coordinator for forming new clubs, but the committee the group is also involved in the rebuilding of clubs. So we, and also we work with clubs to help them keep the members, retain the members that they have. So I'm going to touch a little on the, those general areas. Membership in a club is everybody, every member's business. Normally, if a club is not growing, then guess what? It's dying. Because we, daily we get older, and from experience we find that some people, after a time, as we get up in age, find it not as convenient to attend meetings and participate in club activities, and then you see less and less of those members. So the club is losing members just normally as part of the course. So all clubs need to be engaged in ways to retain members and to keep adding members so that their numbers would not decline. And we have in each club our membership committee. And we know that the senior member, part of their task is to look at the community in which they serve and identify areas that maybe are too big for their club to do. Or there might be a change in population going on next door. Or with areas that they see that can have their underserved, so therefore they can have a club. It's not that you have to be involved in extension, but you can refer to the extension team that there are areas or there's a change in population next door and they might be able to um, serve because their needs you don't quite understand or there's a language difference or, or you happen to know of a medical group in the area or someone said um, a motorbike club, you know. So there are different things that are going on in your neighborhood that you cannot satisfy. You refer that to us and the district. 
and we would see if there is a need for a club in that area. Or you might have had a club that was neighboring two years ago or four years ago and they folded and your club cannot satisfy all the needs for that area. Just refer it to us and we would do the research and see what's necessary and if there is uh, indeed an opportunity there for another club to be uh, started. We don't want to start club on top of a club. So areas where there are a lot of clubs, we are, we are reluctant and not willing to go into build another club on top of where, you know, the clubs there are serving that area. So we try to be very careful. Another thing we try not to do is not to take members for one club to say we build a new club. So if we're breaking up a club to establish a new one, you know, we defeat in the overall goal of the district. And um, we've seen things like that that happened uh, in the past or, you know, within our district. So clubs with the, what we call a, some people say a three-man committee, but really it's four because the chair of the committee when they come off, should be a, the advisor to the next year's committee. So it's really four people on that committee. So the, ch the chair of the committee that came off becomes the advisor. The new chair, their main task is working with the whole group and extension. So whoever works with that chair, they should do research or keep an eye out for extension uh, opportunities near their club. Now, the next member, what we call the junior member, the vice chair, and that chair serves on the board of your club. So that chair takes whatever discussion happens in the other groups to the board so that the members would be aware. And if the members on the board agree that it goes to the club as itself, whether the club would accept it and perhaps pursue whatever is recommended. The junior member is tasked with leadership and retention. So one of the things that the junior member supposed to focus on or have supervised is to see that the officers of the club do the leadership um, programs that are set on the website for secretary, president, vice president, you know, to see that the, the, the officers do complete that program on the website, encourage them to complete it. And also to lead in developing programs for retention. Now, in our clubs, we lose members for sometimes just because the member is dissatisfied or not getting along with a president or some other member in that club. And therefore, we have to, we have to continue looking for conflicts and ways to solve conflicts in the club. In other words, we lose members just because there are disagreements that were not solved timely within our club. And therefore, we have to keep an eye out and help with retention by having those members satisfied on whatever the problem is. Instead of stewing for two, three years, we get it solved. And that's why there's a conflict resolution chair at the district level. Uh, sometimes you have to, they will know what's going on in your club unless it's reported. And whoever is the chair would come in 
and try to settle the problem so that there is unity in the club. For we lose a lot of members because of um, conflicts among members. Um, I, I, I really, really do not encourage members to get involved in extension and take members from an existing club because then you know you you it, that continues as a battle <laughs> with the new club and the old club so you have two battles going along and it doesn't make sense if people operating in one club and for some reason you have to leave and you you decided that you want to assist a new group through the extension team, then you could become maybe a guiding lion, maybe a mentor. You can work with the group, but you don't encourage the members of the club to come out and go with you in the new club and break up that club. Then we have every year we put a freshman into the membership committee and that person becomes the, the new member on that committee. And that person's duties include recruiting and working to build the club. So bringing new members into the club. And that is done with the whole club. I said membership is everybody's business. So that person has uh, the job of helping to plan open house, recruitment sessions, uh, teaching the members um, how to go about recruiting so that you have new members added to your club. Or else you're going to find that as people get older, they may, the usual thing, they go to Florida to live or they go to North Carolina or some other state. And there is it, you're losing members. So you constantly have to add members. To help with retention, we have to be sociable in our club. We have to be welcoming of new ideas because the new people come in, they have their own ideas. Give them a chance. Maybe you form a new members committee and let some, someone guide them in doing a new project that they want to try out. Um, so your meetings need to be effective and timely, begin on time, end on time, and that helps people to want to come because they're involved and, and they feel that they're welcome, that they feel that they're useful, and they can see that they're doing things to help the, um, the club as a whole. So you have to um, keep your members involved. Okay, Laya, PDG Veronica? Yes. I'm going to have to interrupt you because we're kind of running out of time. You're going to have to okay. bring you back to continue telling us all about the extension process. Yes. Thank you so much for your, for your information and okay. for your leadership. Okay, could I just say one thing? I'm encouraging clubs not to get involved in extension, but just to refer. But the, their involvement is in retention and recruiting and just giving us the referrals for extension. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And I see that we're joined by our region chair right on time. Hello. Region, Region Chair everybody. Sylvester. Thank you very much, Zone Chair Paulette. And um, thank you, PDGs. Thank you, members, dignitaries, presidents, secretaries. Good to see you all. Um, thank you, Lion Jennifer. It's good to see you on here. And um, I appreciate yeah. you all taking the time for this AC meeting. Um, the only thing I will add in the interest of time is um, 
I'm encouraging you all to attend the leadership uh, training events. Uh, there have been, this is one of the years when we are constantly being reminded of um, uh, leadership uh, activities and events. And um, uh, all of us have been invited to the upcoming events. Um, next, uh, not this Saturday, but Saturday the 12th is another event. Uh, everyone on here is requ uh, requested to um, uh, make a bit of a presence so we can gather more information from the district to disseminate to all our members. I'm not going to um, take up any more time beside that, but to say thank you all for your participation and your support uh, of our zone chair. Uh, thank you, zone chair Paulette. I will turn it over to you now. Okay, thank you so much, Ryan Sylvester. And um, I would just like to remind all the clubs of the community needs assessment. I know that Lion Jennifer mentioned it, that we look and see what else we can do in our communities. And I'm encouraging all the clubs to do a community needs assessment to see what can be added in terms of service to our community. Okay, at this point, are there any new ideas that anybody would like to throw out to the group? I know everybody has been doing a lot of projects, a lot of different projects, and Line Jennifer told me that I can report return in my hangers. She also said I can report my composting. Um, she she also said I can um. Lion Gina, those bottles that you took out of my car to give to your neighbor, um, we can report on that. All right. Anybody has any other ideas? You have the medicine bottles there. The pill bottles. The, what can you do with them? The use prescription bottles. Yes. The, uh, yeah. the, those can be collected also because they use them in other parts of the world, like the Caribbean and other places, they're very short of those prescription bottles. And um, they, so they recycle them. They, they're, they yeah, they they're collected and sent to them. Yes. Oh, well, I okay. looked into I looked into that recycling of the prescription bottles. Yeah. But then you have to pay the weight. You have to actually. It seemed to be an expensive uh, thing after because after you gather it, you have to pay the shipment to send it to whatever place I think it was that was collecting. And that sort of made me change my mind from that idea of collecting pill bottles because I'm like, this, this ends up being pretty costly just to... Uh... Okay. The, your club don't necessarily have to do the posting. If you talk to the district, they they can collect them and and arrange for it to go with you know a few clubs together. So your club don't have to take on all the responsibility. So don't throw them away. Just oh, thank you, yes. thank you for that information. Yes, yes. like I said, I did yes. think of it and investigated doing that. But when I saw the cost of yeah. getting the prescriptions to the place, I said, oh gosh, no, I don't no. think we can afford this. You but don't have to go I alone. Keep that in mind and probably just, pick that up. Again. Just to piggyback, just to piggyback off of what PDG Veronica is saying, she's correct. It shouldn't be a club project mm -hmm. payment. Mm -hmm. It's it's a club. We you collect the the bottles, but you bring it to the district. Yes. The district is okay. the one that's taking care of getting it from point A to B to C. Yes. And also, okay. there's also the eyeglass collection. You yes. can do that too. That's another service project right there. You collect the eyeglasses and it's the same again. It's a district because I think there's a, a district chair for that and they, um, they, that, the glasses goes to that person and they yes. um, disperse of it. So you don't okay. have to pay for shipping and all that stuff. Just continue doing yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was aware of the eyeglasses, but mm -hmm. I didn't know that the prescription bottles could go to the district. So now I will put that on my little notepad of things to do. And also, there is the cartridge. You know, the, the cartridge out of the computer, the, the printer. 
and, and the, um, the, the printer cartridges, when they're done, right, you really don't throw them out, they're recycled too. So they're, they're, they're a collect, there's a collection of that because I know my club, we collect it most of the time because one of our members, she works with this law firm and they normally have these cartridges that they throw out. So mm -hmm. you collect them and they give it up, um, recycle it back again. So, I mean, those are projects that cost zero pennies. So, what about, the box? Actually, yeah. actually, the cartridges, you get a little stipend for them. Oh, but you okay. see, even better. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're <laughs> giving about, and you're getting. Yeah, what about staples? Because what I'm yeah. doing right now, I'm sweeping through my entire house because everywhere I had sons who, collect, <clears> you know, they're cords and tubes and i think i have the computer things the charger cords and stuff and so they're taking all of this back so right now i have a bag and does the district collect those as well should i not take it to staples no, you, you could take it I... to staples you could take it to staples because remember, no we that's got that'll be your project it's, it's easier to go get it to staples because i'm not sure the district is doing that right uh, right now but maybe they might they might be i don't know but if you have an outlet of staples which is simpler just take a picture of what you're just what you're returning or what you're giving there and put uh, up on my lion i i return cards and stuff so yeah you can oh, report it i didn't think about okay. that either <laughs> i was about to go and give that up tomorrow i have a whole grocery you can bag still go give it up but but when you finish give it I up just report, report it, it. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Thank you, Lions. Thank you. Um, if you look at the chat, um, Lion Iris has put some information in the chat for service project ideas, so you can look in the chat and um, jot down some ideas. <clears throat> and at this point, I would like to thank everybody for joining us at our advisory committee meeting. My speakers, I am Jennifer and PDG Veronica. Thank you so much. Um, we have to have another advisory committee in the next probably two months. So I would like us to continue this discussion at that time. And I would specifically like to thank Lion Iris for facilitating this Zoom platform tonight. She is so patient. Thank you so much for your patience, Lion Iris. No and problem, it's a pleasure. I, <laughs> I will now call on Lion Merle to give us the benediction. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we want to thank you for being with us throughout this throughout our AC meeting with our chair, Lion Paulet. Your presence has been in this place from the start to the end. And we want to say thank you, Lord, as we leave this meeting. Let us go out there and be the salt and light of this world. May we put into practice, Lord, what we have discussed tonight and learn. Help us to make a difference in the world for the glory of your name. May your praise be continually in our hearts and our lips as we live through the matter, matter leading, to, leading today for a better tomorrow. We ask in your name and we believe and pray. Amen. 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 If everyone could just hold for a moment, I'm going to put it in gallery mode so we can take a photo for, Lion, uh, for Zone Chair Lion Paulette. So one moment, please. Okay, can I get your good side? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if anybody is off camera, if you would like to come on, we're going to take a nice picture. All righty. Lion Pam, Lion Elaine. Yep, Lion Elaine and Lion Bridgewater. Lion um, I know Lion Paul, um, Paulette, Pauline, you're having issues with your your Zoom, but if anybody yes. else is yes, able I to am. come on, we're about to take Don't a nice Lion Marcy is here. Yeah, Lion Marcy. Yes. Lion Pam. Yes, Lion Gina. Yep. Any last last ones for the photo? <laughs> if not, I'm about to take it. <laughs> All righty. Here we go. One. Oh, I, I forgot myself. <laughs>
<laughs> what I've been saying, what about yourself? I was trying not to be a distraction as I was doing the behind the scenes technical work. So, sorry, everybody. <laughs> All righty. So now we're ready. <laughs> All righty. One, two, three. Okay, hold on one moment. Okay, zone, chair, toilet, AC meeting, 11-2-2022. All righty, we got it saved. And for those that have access to your computer, I will now put it in the chat for everybody. But also, I would provide it to Zone Chair Lion Paulette, and she can also send it out to you as well. But I'm going to send it in the chat so I don't forget. For all those that are on here, one moment. I always say the trick is trying to find it. <laughs> All right, I think I found it. Let's see. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> All righty. There we go. Okay, thank you. All righty, so I put it in the chat, but again, I will provide it to Zone Chairline Paulette. And she'll send it out as well. But again, for those that have, are at a computer or even if you're on your phone, if you're able to save it, you can also save it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending our AC meeting. Have a wonderful evening. You too. Good thank evening, you. everyone. Thank you. Lime Merle, it's wonderful to see your face on here. <laughs> thank you. Look you look lovely. Good to see you. you. Same here. Good, good, good. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.